Greetings, gentlemen. I want to talk to you today about dinnerware. As some of you know, my friend Rich Cooper and I do a weekly show called Before the Trainwreck. We try to help men avoid decisions that will ruin their lives, especially when it comes to relationships. I'll leave a link below to our playlist. In a recent episode, I said something that generated quite a bit of personal feedback. Seems like it deserves its own video, so here's the story. Rich and I were discussing an email in which Amanda was describing his relationship troubles, and in his email, he referred to the women he was dating as plates. He refers to her as a plate, just for reference, and you know, for those of you that are new to it, uh, that's just someone you're dating in a non-monogamous fashion. Um, people usually do this early stages, women do the exact same thing. I said, what's the real issue here? What's he struggling with? And what jumped out was the usage of the word plate, and that word's always bothered me because it's kind of a dehumanizing term. Now, it's uncharacteristic of me to come off like the language police. Hey, guys. So I want to expand on the explanation I gave over on Rich's channel. For those of you who don't know, the term plate comes from the expression spinning plates, which means dating multiple people. It's just a description of behavior. Back in my day, we called it playing the field, musical mattresses. As long as everybody's honest about their intent, no one gets to cry foul. None of that concerns me. What troubles me is people referring to each other as objects. And before I go any further, I want you to know that I have no use for the language police. And the general reprogramming of most people's minds. They've had plenty to say to me over the years, and my response to them is usually something like, go yourself. So let me assure you, I don't care what you say or who you say it to. Your words create your outcomes and your outcomes are none of my business. I only gave my opinion because someone asked for it. And what jumped out about the situation was what seemed like a tendency to frame the opposite sex as objects to be manipulated. Both genders do it, and in my clinical work, I've noticed that objectifying people even a little bit leads to messy relationships, and messy relationships are not a winning recipe for life. This may seem like a trivial point, but a man's choice of words have consequences in his life because his words reflect his mindset, and his mindset has tremendous influence over his outcomes. Dr. Robert Glover made the point in his latest book, Dating Essentials for Men. He wrote, If you believe all women are angry, needy, liars, gold diggers, incapable of fidelity, etc. These are the only traits you will see in women. You won't notice all the women who don't possess these traits. You will attract these kinds of women, and this is the only kind of woman with whom you will be comfortable. If a guy's labeling women as anything other than fully human, he's opening the door for a lot of drama and conflict because the only women he'll be comfortable with are the ones he thinks are unworthy of the full consideration a human being deserves, and that is a shaky foundation for any relationship. The same is true for women who objectify men, like the ones who refer to their exes as sperm donors. It's hard to see how that mindset works out well for anyone because devaluing people is the first step toward acting disrespectfully toward them and making them angry and creating little messes in their lives. Sometimes people get very vindictive about those little messes. It's how wars are started. Disrespect is expensive. Those who want respect, give respect. What's interesting is that using language to objectify people is really old behavior in humans. There's a great discussion of that in the book Sapiens by Yuval Harari. He described how words that dehumanize outsiders were a central characteristic of early languages. He wrote that in a lot of early languages, the word for members of my tribe meant people, and the word for members of every other group meant something like not people. There was probably a good reason for doing something that had the potential to create so much ill will between groups. It was a dangerous world, and maybe dehumanizing others was just a survival strategy. Maybe it made it easier to be ruthless in the event that one tribe's survival had to come at the expense of some other group. Whatever the reason, a little streak of that dehumanizing tendency runs through all of us. It's especially pronounced among people who are high in sociopathy. Sociopaths don't disregard other people's humanity so much as they're unable to see it in the first place. Take a little detour with me, fellas. I want to digress for a minute and talk about sociopaths. If you've made it this far into the video, then you probably are not even a little bit sociopathic. But if you're objectifying people, you're exercising a little sliver of sociopathic behavior. Now, I don't want to get all hysterical and overstate the case. Calling a woman a plate is a far cry from the Jeffrey Dahmer approach to romance. It's just a minor mental shift that makes it slightly easier for you to exploit them. It's so small it's almost negligible, but it's exactly the sort of thing that backfires, and that's why I want to spend a minute on this. I see a lot of guys making what seems to me to be a major tactical error in life. These are decent guys who are trying to act a little bit sociopathic in one or two areas like dating or business. They're looking for shortcuts, and there are plenty of shysters out there trying to sell them on sociopathic techniques from manipulating people out of sex and money. This is nothing new. People have been peddling the alleged virtues of sociopathy for a long time, even if they call it something else. And social media has made it especially easy for these fraudsters to draw people in with a false image of success. 
The problem is that if you're not a sociopath, you put yourself at risk by trying to act like one. It's a costly strategy. One of the messages I try desperately to get out there for men is don't complicate your life with short-sighted decisions, and any measure of sociopathic behavior is a very short-sighted way of managing your affairs. That's because the curse of the sociopath is that people figure them out, so they always have to round up a new batch of chumps. Plus, they're always avoiding people who are looking for revenge. And this isn't my opinion. The research on this is solid. I think successful sociopaths are so rare because their success depends on a couple of things most people don't have. First, they need an IQ far above average. Being sociopathic takes serious intellectual horsepower because it means succeeding at the expense of others, and that means avoiding a lot of smart, capable people who are out for revenge. It's like playing chess every day against multiple opponents. Most sociopaths aren't nearly smart enough to pull it off. Second, it takes commitment. There's no middle path with sociopathy. You can't exploit people and enjoy the benefit of good relationships. Those things are mutually exclusive because good people see what's going on and they leave. People talk. Word spreads. Even a little bit of sociopathic behavior brings on the curse of the sociopath. The idea that sociopathy is an all-or-nothing game shows up in plenty of literature and entertainment, and I think there's a reason for that. There's no such thing as a part-time sociopath who's winning at life. But getting back to the point, if a person somehow manages to be a genius and be completely ruthless, then maybe he can get rich, or maybe she can claw her way to the top of some hierarchy, or maybe he can just trick a lot of women into sleeping with him. Eventually it all comes crashing down, and in the meantime it'll be plenty lonely. Aside from their victims, the only people in their lives will be bootlickers and fools and opportunists along with plenty of traders waiting to cut them off at the knees. And just between you and me, you want to know what the worst thing is about your average sociopath? They're boring as hell. This is one of the first things I noticed back when I was working in prisons. Most of the sociopaths I met there were dim bulbs who wouldn't shut up about how brilliant and persecuted they thought they were. But anyway, if you're anything other than a perfectly ruthless genius, then you're better off not dabbling in the world of antisocial behavior. You'll get a lot further by actually connecting with people and trying to come up with some reason their lives are better for having you in it. And getting back to my original point, your intention will be reflected in the way you speak about them. As for calling women plates, I just don't see the upside. If a habit isn't serving you or your mission, and it isn't helping anyone else, and it's possibly costing you something, then what's the point in doing it? It's a sucker's bet. Now, I understand that most guys who use words like plate only do it because language is contagious, and they just picked up the phrase somewhere. But just like your language reflects your intention, your intention can shift to reflect the language you use because our brains prefer consistency. If you don't choose your words carefully, your brain will change your attitude to match, and your attitude will shape your outcomes. I also know that some people, both men and women, objectify the opposite sex intentionally, but not because they're sociopaths. They're downplaying the other side's humanity for the same reasons our ancestors did it. They sense danger, and they probably have some history that gives them good reason to worry. I get it. But if that's you, you have to decide at some point, does it serve you to face that danger and put your relationships in order, or is it more useful to play it safe and just take what you can get? I'm not here to judge. I've stood at that crossroad myself. All right, fellas, that's enough out of me. I'll talk to you soon. Back in my day, we called it playing the field.